so i'm just doing a sound check this light is brighter than the surface of the sun hon it's hon it's in my hands i have it turned up this high because you can't really read my sign hon it's hon it's spin them bands it says who's your daddy because we're talking about submission yeah i'm gonna take all i can get and most of us struggle with it because we don't have fathers we don't have father figures and because submission is a function of interdependence that money keeps that pussy away you know if one side isn't gonna submit they can't demand submission Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, You in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnee. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well, go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to yet another episode of The Wireless Woman. And on this episode, we will be talking all about why why can't we get these nappy-headed hoes to submit? That's some nappy-headed hoes there, I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> you know, that word submission is really starting to lose its gaslighting power. And I'm really excited to see that, but let's go ahead and give it the send-off that it truly deserves in wireless woman fashion. In the time that I've been away from my channel, I've really tried to delve deep into myself. I feel like because the wireless woman was forged in a place where I was truly unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed, coming back into these social media spaces really creates a massive amount of social anxiety for me and I think there is all this pressure in this space to present a certain way and it can cause you not to show up in the authentic ways that you really want to and so being true to the essence the spirit of my channel I have to take that time to reevaluate really make sure that the seeds that I'm sowing are the harvest that I want to reap. And because my channel is small enough and new enough, it gives me time to be patient, to redirect, to course correct, if you will, and make sure that I am presenting how I want to be received. So I'm not one of those people who wants to be a leader in search of followers, who wants to come on to social media platforms empty, really seeking validation to fill me up. I want to be a person who comes with purpose and with intention and that I'm dispersing the energy that I want to receive. So being in a more introspective, thoughtful place is allowing me to come back to my channel with fresh perspectives. And I can honestly say that it might not be the most unifying, fulfilling content that some of my core foundational base started out with. But in true wireless woman fashion and in the essence of remaining authentic, I've got to take you on the journey that I've been on as I want to go on the journeys that you go on. 
and we can bring that information back and see where we can find resolution. But without truth, there is no true resolution. But before I get too deep into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my revolutionary Wi-Fi's seekers of the way to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. All right, Wi-Fi's, welcome back to another episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. That's how we take attendance on this channel and see who all is present for class. Go ahead and click that like button for me. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel. <laughs> So you can stay abreast of all the times that I upload new content or when I go live. So today we are going to be talking all about submissions. So as I keep bringing up on these newly returning episodes to the channel, I have spent a lot of time to myself and really discovered a lot of new things. So this is the dog daddy. And I've become mildly obsessed <laughs> with this channel and this content. So I'm going to show you just a couple of shorts from this channel that hopefully won't get flagged because I myself have a large dog. I bought a large dog because I was looking for the type of dog that would intimidate other people, make me feel safe, and in the rare event that some drama gets started, could actually protect me. And the one thing about a large dog is you can't control them the way that you would with a smaller dog that you can just take off its feet. And a lot of people really miss the point that dogs are a herd animal. They do well in pairs or in groups, but in the absence of having an alpha presence, the dogs will rebel even against their own owners. They're temperamental like children. <laughs> and I find it really interesting that this wafy young boy can instantaneously show dominance over, I mean, some vicious dogs that have been scaring and terrorizing their own owners sometimes for years. And the more I watched this video, the more I started to think about that word submission and what it requires. It requires a massive, massive amount of trust. Because let's be honest, we as dog owners, I myself included, expect our dogs to give their lives for us. But in order for us to really show them that they're safe with us, we have to be the more dominant energy. Now we feed them, we take care of them. Dogs don't give a damn about that. <laughs> That's just a part of what we're expected to provide as dog owners. As a matter of fact, don't provide it. Don't provide it and see how quick someone takes your dog from you. See how quick you get reported to animal control. And the more I started to watch this video, the more I started to realize what the issue was. One of the things that Dog Daddy confronts in these pets is what he calls fear aggression. I feel like, <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, lately I've been using very roundabout ways to make my point. And I don't know if it's a product of sitting around by myself thinking super deep thoughts without any intervention, but certain things make sense to me in a certain way. And 
let's just try it out and see if it makes sense to anybody else. I mean, I'm not high. I'm not getting high. I'm not smoking weed. I'm just looking at certain things and getting a whole different perspective from it. And while we have all of these men channeling their inner bad bitch saying that they can't get women to submit to them, <laughs> Like here, here are some models of what that looks like. got all these white men non-black men out here like the crocodile hunter that are subduing wild animals one of the things that God gave man was dominion dominion over animals but he only had dominion over animals as long as he practiced dominion over himself as soon as we see the man trespass the rules the law that God had given him, we see him lose all ability to provide, to protect, to subdue. We see him lose dominion. And one of the things that the dog daddy consistently reinforced to lazy ass, inconsistent owners is that their dog's behavior is going to reflect their behavior, their values, their consistency or lack thereof. And it's so strange how we understand that in the animal kingdom. People are so willing to be compared to pack animals, alphas, betas, omegas. But then when you actually have to play by nature's rules, when men are actually expected to protect, to provide, all of a sudden... We want a 50-50 equal situation. But under those circumstances, there has to be a mutual amount of authority shared and a mutual amount of trust. Now, what I find to be so interesting is because in Abrahamic religions the man was created first and we have all these reinforcements throughout the scripture that say that the man is the head of the woman which is strange because you find it all throughout the new testament and don't get me wrong i'm not one of those revelationists that's trying to say that the bible has errors in it and it's not true and it's not right because i can show you all the myriad, the plethora of places in the New Testament <laughs> where women are not being submissive at all and still being blessed and used in the absence of men stepping up by God. But I notice you don't really find the same the man is the head of the woman type of decrees in the Old Testament, particularly when you look at the creation story, it says male and female made he them and he blessed them and he gave them dominion. Because Adam and Eve were one person, one expression of God that were never meant or intended to be separated from each other in any way. It's death that parts us. That's why in your marriage vows, you say until death do we part. But until death you're supposed to operate as one force and the man gives life to that force and the woman gives energy to it. So the man gives the woman his life. She gives him a child in exchange, but it's a fair and equal exchange <laughs> as women. We are not intended to be 
married single mothers. The whole purpose of the marriage is for the man to die and for that life to be reborn in the woman in the form of a child. But I digress. So this dominion was given to both of them to operate in together. Even animals, wild animals were under the dominion of mankind. And I think what we're seeing in this loss of dominion is our men reaching out to make themselves what they feel like is equal with women. Because I hear them consistently saying without saying that they feel like women have too much power, that it's not necessarily that women need to be powerless, clearly, because they want us to go 50 50 with them. But somewhere the trust has been lost and the fear has turned into aggression. No, Sister Terry, if it's over your head, jump off the live, baby. And no one gets what they want in that setting. So often the dog daddy makes it clear to people that their pet is stressed out, that their response is coming out of their lack of trust in their owner. And providing for the pet doesn't change that. Providing for the pet doesn't make the pet trust the owner. It's only that dominant energy coming in and saying, you are safe with me. I'm not going to lead you in a path that's going to create harm for you. And for that reason, you don't have to protect and look that look out for yourself. You don't have to attack. You don't have to live in the perpetual fear that something bad will happen to you. And this man is able to turn <laughs> these pets around in minutes, in minutes. And I've heard men complain for years <laughs> in relationship about the lack of submission of these women. That's a nappy headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs> you got to come to a solution. And those answers are already in nature for us. And both sides are hollering, be accountable. Both sides are taking power from each other. And I got to be honest, I'm not one of those male apologists. I just don't think it's the woman's responsibility to relinquish authority to people who haven't shown that they will build their community who haven't even shown that they prefer their community and have genuine love for it. I don't think it's a woman's job to submit and relinquish control to people who use it for <laughs> vile reasons. I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. That's why I'm consistently on this channel saying, let's stay the course. We have watched a fit, friendly, feminine group of women empower their men to go out and rape, pillage, colonize whole other continents of people. You know, where were white women when white men were bombing Japan. And the thing about black women that I'm starting to notice is we are just about the only group of women who actually can, who are actually empowered because of our situational circumstances to stand against tyranny and misogyny in really every form. You know, white men, I find, need black women even more than black men do. But while black men are now using the access <laughs> that they have been given by being inducted into white supremacy to now go out into every other community and nest, create families, interracial children, like this is literally colonizing behavior.
It is literally white supremacy behavior to go out and glorify a group of women who birthed the men that oppress the world. I just needed a say moment on that. And then turn back to you and say, be more like them. We're the black mothers that stood in those black communities and put those black men that were selling drugs <laughs> to other people in the community that were creating the crackheads that were breaking into homes and robbing homes. You can go through all of these rap lyrics. Biggie, Tupac talking about how their moms put them out, how their moms refused to take drug money from them. We have always been a group of women that have had the highest standards in the world for our men. We expect monogamy from them when even white women are having to share them with tons of other women as they have done with their men before. The Harvey Weinsteins, the Jeff Epsteins, like, tell me fundamentally how it's any different than a Tristan Thompson. 20 years from now, women are going to say the same thing about Nick Cannon <laughs> that they're saying about C.K. Lewis. They've become incontinent, narcissistic, terroristic colonizers. They're literally going to other countries to get women. And the sad part is they've watched a whole nother racial group of men dominate the entire world. And yes, these men use their penis as well, but not just that. I feel like black men think that they can dominate the world with dick. But here's the thing. You gotta also have rockets. You gotta also have industry. Y'all, you've gotta also have an economy. You gotta be able to make jobs if you're gonna hold on to power. You can't conquer. You can't be a conquistador just with dick alone. And they want us as the last stand against global domination, against world domination. Y'all ready for this? To lay down and let them march free. And I will present this. Maybe we should, but not necessarily in the way that they've asked us to. More like the parting of a crowd to allow them to go free. I just feel that we as women have so much more to offer the world than being worried about how desirable we are right now. Just like everything that goes in style, out of style, in fashion, in season, out of season, they put you on that discount rack. And you think to yourself, that's just the end. But then like 20 years later, here comes kids strolling down the street in bell bottoms yet again. When I started seeing bell bottoms again, I mean, I wore them myself in the 90s. My mom wore them in the 70s. But when I saw my daughter waltz in here with some bell bottom jeans on, I was like, am I really that old? Yes. Yes, I am. I am really that old. But my point is. When they need us, they'll call. Stay in here. When they call, a hero is what we're going to give them. And while they're working on colonizing, we can actually build, we can use their absence from our community to really invest in ourselves, become who we want to be, build our communities build our self confidence back because as I said in the last video these are the same men <laughs> these are the same men that beat on your grandma these are the same men that stole to go buy crack 
from your mom and now they're here with white supremacy for us in our generation. I don't know what comes next. But I know that I choose to approach this new divine feminine era with the authority and the power that we as black women are being endowed with. I wrote in my book, God Face, that people only fear things that have power. And I was talking in that book about the blackness and I was saying there's no way a whole group of people who are actually the minority would go so far as to subjugate a group of people unless they truly feared them. And where could that fear be coming from? As we have seen it, with white men oppressing the whole world for fear that anybody else that gets a hold of power could potentially phase them out, usurp them, possibly oppress and enslave them. So they hold on to power with fear. And the fear that we feel is just the projection of the perpetual fear that they live in. That's why they don't want critical race theory taught. That's why they want your history erased. That's why they are willing to induct people into white supremacy that don't even belong there. Other minorities, Asians, Indians, all for the sake of robbing black people of power. If black people are that powerful. How powerful could black women be if they have put fear into their own men? It's a projection. The rejection that they want us to live in, the lack of confidence, elevating another race of women above us comes from them living in the inferiority to white men. So if I look in the mirror and feel that and then this woman is a reflection of the inferiority I live in consistently to another male group, then I got to make sure they feel that, too. I got to make sure that black women feel that white women are above them, too, because how dare they? <laughs> how dare black women in the face of oppression succeed? It takes away all of our excuses for why we can't. When they are our very reflection, they have given us life. How can they be winning while we lose? It's a bitterness. It's a resentment. And I get it. I understand it. But this is not our fight, black women. This is not our problem to solve. I want to be able to stand in wholeness next to the men that deserve that allegiance. The problem with being a woman any man can get or as people like to say, a pick me. The problem with that is that we've given no incentive to the men that are actually doing the work, doing what they're supposed to do. There's no pedestal for the good men, even though it's two of them. I'm, I'm joking. It's five. Um, there's no way we can elevate these men if the bar is set in hell. You see? You see? It's just like being a good woman. There's no way to be a good woman when you're in competition with trash women <laughs> who are still being deemed more desirable than you. Like, I'm out here being a good woman. But here's a woman that is doing absolutely nothing good. You know, your Kim Kardashians, your Amber Roses. And, and I'm not saying these women are bad women. I'm just saying they've been rewarded for bad behavior. Now, if I've got to compete with those women, then I've got to get a BBL, got to get some liposuction, got to maybe do some face work here. I'm getting older. I like I like the fact that I'm aging, but I'm just saying 
if we're going to stay in competition, because I and Kim Kardashian are the same age. If we're going to stay in competition with these women based on the criteria that's been given for what a good woman should be, it's going to lower our standards of behavior. That should tell you what you're dealing with. That should tell you what the problem is. This is not something that's going to put black women on a pedestal and separate us from other women. This is going to be the final straw that takes black culture and puts it in the toilet and flushes. It's nothing to be emulated anymore. We don't have families that are coming up in the church. We don't have the community church anymore. We don't have community organizations. We don't have anything that's our own. And now the very last thing we were holding on to, which is our image, is being tanked from within. And I always bring it back to racism because misogyny is just racism, sexy cousin. We watched this when we had black male leadership. We watched black men kill them. Yes, white supremacy is behind it. Yes, I know Bill O'Neill was being paid by the FBI. Yes, I know it wasn't really the black men that killed Malcolm X. There's some new research out now that says that they had rubber bullets in the guns that were shot from out the crowd and that he was actually shot from the ceiling. Yes, 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 I know. But my point in what I'm saying is the enemy has always been among us. All of this music glorifying the sale of drugs to the black community, all this music about hoes and project chicks and chicken heads, all this 70s black exploitation, pimp hoe culture. And all bitches are the same, just like my hoes, you know. I keep them broke. The Mac, Superfly. I find it shocking that black women are surprised as if we forgot who we've been dealing with all this time. And I'm not trying to make black men out to be an enemy. I just want us to be sober minded. I want us to be free from the narcissism that has gaslit us into believing that if we continue to acquiesce, if we continue to condescend, if we continue to submit that we're going to get everything we've been promised, that's what happened in the March on Washington. It was supposed to have been The January 6th insurrection, it was supposed to be violent. It was supposed to go hard. They had people that were going to go to the airport and lay on the tarmac so that they couldn't land the National Guard planes that they had planned to fly in and stop it because they knew it was going to be violent. Enter Martin Luther King, who says, let's be peaceful. Let's be nonviolent. Let's fight hate with love. And decades and decades later, black people have become so integrated in the white supremacy that we actually have Kanye making White Lives Matter shirts. I mean, that had to be a black man that would do something about that. And now we're all sitting around talking about Kanye because now he's important. And black women, these channels, we have whole blocks of channels and content that's dedicated to nothing but black women either praising black men or slamming black men. And they both do the same thing, which is glorify the black man in some way or another. I want us to be unplugged. Phase two, unbothered, and then unleashed to our true destiny and purpose, which is not to live in the shadow of a group of people, whether they be black, white, male, female, any group of people that's calling for our oppression. I don't see how that can be beneficial to us as a people group, (laughs) period. And I told you my increasing focus is going to be on how we can transition as a body, as a family, as a group into content 
that totally, completely gray rocks black men? How can we, in our power, in our education, you know, we are 80 percent now the, the single parents in homes. So how can we make a change? How can we be different? Because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. But we're seeing it happen. We're seeing natural selection step in. And we're seeing women say, you know what? I'm not going to date. We're seeing women really begin to say, no, if he's not coming with what I'm coming with, he's not going to be treated as my equal. And he's definitely not going to be my leader. And like I said, it's just been so wild watching these dog daddy videos. The dog daddy videos made me go back and start watching the crocodile hunter videos. I mean, he got killed with wild animals, but like it wasn't even like a vicious animal that killed him. It was like super accidental. I'm pretty sure that uh, if he hadn't died that way, he'd probably still be somewhere subduing tigers and all kinds of stuff. I mean, you got the Tiger King. You got all these white men out here subduing wild animals. They think it's fun. They think that's sport. And you got a black man telling a black woman he can't get her to submit. I, I think it's laughable. I think if black men really want to be white men, they should let white men teach him. I mean, I'm just saying they sit around saying they don't want to work for the white man, rejecting all of his teaching, rejecting all of his ways, but then wanting all the same spoils of being patriarchal white supremacists. They even want his women. I'm just saying you should probably just be like Kanye, put on a red hat, sit around with them, glean, get information, be mentored by white men. I mean, if you're not going to listen to a black woman, I mean, we're in white male spaces as well. But I digress. I'm in a rabbit hole. But I just wanted to take time to deep this out and really say that women, this is in our fight to keep defending our men and to stay in this cognitive dissonance that what's happening is not what's really happening. Our community is burning to the ground while we sit Drinking a cup of water. You know, I had to make a decision who I could save. I remember being a young mother and I was married at the time. And listen, I had a non-black husband. I had a white husband. Um, I had a husband with white skin. Yeah, he was Hispanic culturally, but he had white skin. And he wouldn't work. You know, because listen, a trash man is a trash man. It don't matter <laughs> what language he speak, what color his skin is. An oppressive man will use you to whatever extent he can use you for. It's capitalism. So if I can capitalize, I mean, why not? And I remember thinking to myself, I can't take care of these children and him. I had to make a decision. You know, each day was me denying myself. And it was like, how much of myself do I have to go around? Like black women, we only have enough of ourselves for ourselves, our children, the elderly, the disabled. Something's got to give. <laughs> and being ultra masculine Using fear, aggression to try to protect our men isn't going to work. I think we can become softer, more feminine, more cooperative if we let that go. The most masculine space that I see women in is either one trying to defend black men. I mean, you can hear it in a voice when they, they get, he didn't have to, you know, what I mean? he didn't have to caping for the men or defending themselves against attacks from black men. Well, y'all didn't, you know, the defensiveness of it. And I think we can take ourselves off a two front war by completely disengaging. It's time to 
disengage. That's my better word for unplug. (laughs) I had to send that word in an email to one of my supervisors. And I told him, I said, at that point, I had to disengage from the conversation. You know, I'm learning the art. Um, I was listening to a I was listening to a podcast on Hanifa Nayela's channel, and he said that men have the science, but women have the art. And women, we have to learn the art of submission again. And it's not necessarily about being powerless. It's about understanding you are so powerful that most fights you don't actually need to fight. But I feel like it's our ignorance, it's our lack of truth and willingness to accept the reality that we're in that's causing us to fight. We're fighting in disillusionment. We're fighting for something that we don't have. And it's keeping us in a place of work and it won't let us get to a place of rest. I hear all these women talking about wanting to be a damsel. White women were damsels. And you know what their men did? Strung black bodies to trees and burned them. That's where the term picnic comes from. You pick a nigger and you tie them up and you burn them. Good old fashioned barbecue. Um, Not a cookout. See, black people have a cookout. White people have a barbecue. And these terms are not <laughs> casual the way we use them now. That's what a picnic was. That's why white people have picnics and we have cookouts. Right? And these women would go out on these outings with these men, bring their children, and watch them victimize people. And the sad part is a lot of these black men are sons. And, yeah, there's some good ones. Yeah, there are. There's some good ones. Let's create some space for the good ones to be great. And the only way we can do that is to keep the rotten apples out from the bunch. Who's going to create that separation? Black women. We will create it in our separation process. I told you, a man said it to my face. He said, y'all don't have no power. As he was on a date nap trying to date me. He said, y'all can't get picked unless we pick you. Meanwhile, trying to get picked. It's weird. It's weird. It's, It's a projection. Like literally you go to the movie and there's a projector in the back and then there's a screen up here. It's like a total projection of their own reflection. And I just don't feel like we need to continue to put energy into that. As always, I want to hear what you think. I want to hear what your experiences have been, not just as black women, because I will say there are black men who have experienced a lot of these same things with black women who have come out of some of these relationships or have been raised by narcissistic or absent fathers, you know, that in the absence of knowing and understanding what a strong male figure was, there's a lot of black women out here with fear, aggression that do get the better of a good man. They don't get the best of great men, though. But I will say there are lots of men who have had experiences that I know have been very unsavory. And I want this to be a place we can come and heal together. So make sure you drop me some comments. Make sure that if you have comments that you don't want to leave on the page for whatever reason, you can email me at admin at the wirelesswoman.com. But until the next episode, class is now dismissed. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this episode, then you might want to check out this episode right here. And if you haven't already, you can click this link to subscribe to my channel. Until the next time, stay unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. We don't negotiate with terrorists.